Hey guys, so today we are going to continue the Contemporary Techniques 101 series and I'm going to talk about air sounds. For those of you who don't know or you're new to my channel, I have two different series about contemporary techniques. I have this one, which is for performers and learning how to make all these sounds, and I have one for composers, which is aimed at the difficulties and writing for them and more aimed at applying them into your music. I have already made the air sounds video for the composer's side of things. I will link that in the description and the cards. And if you're interested, I will also link the playlists to both this series and the composer series. Please go check those out. Uh, if you have any techniques that you want me to cover in either series or both series, please let me know. I'm always happy to change my filming schedule around based on what you guys want. We're going to talk about air sounds today, and the basic definition of air sounds is pretty much in the name. You add more air into the sound. And while they're pretty easy to pull off in terms of physical technique, it does also go against a lot of our training, especially with the third type that I'm gonna talk about last. We're taught to have a lot of focus and no air in our sound, and this obviously goes against everything we were taught. Um, but it also does give you more control over your sound. If you can put that air purposefully, then you can take it away as well. So it's not necessarily going to ruin your technique by learning how to do this. So I'm going to talk about three types of air sounds. Uh, they're kind of the basic three, and once you have these three down, you can practice them and get different levels of everything, but really having the three types is the basis. So what are these three types, Robin? Why are you just talking at me? Uh, the first one is just plain noise air, as little pitch as possible. Then there's pitched air, and then there's half tone, half air. Uh, if you've seen the composer video, you know that half air, half pitch can go in many directions and it can go in many different proportions. And that's what I was talking about where you can adjust as you get comfortable. And as you are asked to do more of these things, you're going to be asked to do more noise than pitch or more pitch than noise. There's a lot of different levels that obviously are going to be used. and if you have the control over the basic ones, then you'll be able to figure out how to do the more complicated ones. So, the simplest in terms of how to do it is pure noise. The only sticking point with this one is the flute is a pitched instrument. There's always going to be a semblance of a pitch no matter what. Any combination of keys that you press down is going to create a pitch. It could be a microtone, it could be a multiphonic, but it's still going to have pitch behind it. So the trick is finding syllables to use that mask that pitch. My favorite one is a shh sound. You can hear there's that semblance of pitch. I'm fingering a low D, so you can hear that, but the noise and the resistance against my teeth and against my lips is making more sound than just that pitch. There's a lot of different ways, and some of them are gonna give you more pitch than others. So playing around with harsh consonant sounds, SHs, CHs, TSs, F FPs kind of thing, they're very, very active in your tongue and in your lips. They're gonna disrupt the air more. There's really no way to practice that except just make sounds and see what masks the bass pitch as much as you can. I honestly like having a library of sounds that I know like the shh is gonna be really harsh and the tss is gonna be a little bit softer but it's still gonna have a lot of noise in it. So I know what kind of sounds have what kind of energy and so if a composer asks I want just straight angry noise, I'm gonna use an a SH kind of sound. And if they want just ambient sound, then I'm gonna use a softer consonant syllable. The next one is pitched air. This is obviously the next easiest. It doesn't require you to create an embouchure. You're still just blowing air over the flute, but you want to remove the noise this time. You just want that pitched air to sound. The trick is 
getting your air fast enough that you don't get a whistle tone, but getting your air slow enough that you don't get true pitch. I find that having a very loose semblance of my embouchure is the easiest. If I'm just giving faces completely relaxed, there's too much noise. It's a nice noise sound, but it doesn't really get as much air into the flute as you want. And that's not the idea. You do really want air into the flute. Um, with this one, again, you're gonna be fingering pitches and you have to experiment. Uh, try really slow air and see what happens. At what point do you get whistle tones? At what point do you get pitch? Uh, find those limitations and then adapt for that. Uh, it is a really relaxed embouchure. You don't have to have any tension in it, but it's still there in terms of directing the air into the flute rather than just having it go everywhere. That's really the big difference between noise air and pitched air is pitched air has some focus in it. And again, you're not making a full embouchure that's not worth it and it's actually gonna hurt the sound in the end because you're gonna probably get flute sound. Um, but you're still directing the air more. The last one is obviously air and pitch. This one's the hardest to figure out how to do because it's the one that's the easiest to fall back onto your training and remove the air. It's also the one that requires more thought on your embouchure and it requires more thought about your air pressure. Um, you're trying to get tone but you're also not trying to lose the air. So doing that on purpose is actually quite difficult. Some of you might remember when you were a beginner, it was quite easy and that happened all the time and it was something that your teacher told you not to do. But doing it purposefully now is the difficult part. No. That's kind of the typical air 50-50 kind of sound. Um, that's really the goal to start with. And if you see how I'm playing, my embouchure is still looser than I am normally. I'll actually show you. So you can see as I loosen my embouchure and kind of push it forward, I get more air on the sound and it even dissipates at some point. Um, and that's a nice exercise actually. Start with full pitch and slowly relax your embouchure. Uh, the easiest way, for me at least, is to kind of push my lips forward and apart. That's also because my embouchure is so right set that I don't have as much option to open um, because then it will leak out the sides of my mouth and I don't have any tone. Uh, but find that balance of relaxing with st while still being able to maintain pitch. The other way to do it is obviously to go the opposite direction. So start with pure air and focus till you get some pitch. That one's a little easier when you have an idea of where to stop. So I would recommend first going from full tone into air and then as you get more comfortable with where your embouchure is in that sound to go from air into tone. Uh, and then as you're getting more comfortable, you can stop places as well. Uh, so that's a way that you can learn how to do the 80-20 or 20-80 and all those kinds of things is the process of getting to the 50-50. You just stop there and go, okay, what is my mouth doing? <laughs> Um, this particular technique is all about your embouchure. Uh, it has really nothing to do with your air support because you're not really meant to have great tone when you're doing it. Um, so you don't need this like immensely supported tone. Uh, and sometimes it's actually kind of nice to have an unsupported tone just because it makes the air sounds a little bit easier. Um, but it's still all about here and what you're doing with your lips and what you're doing with your tongue and what you're doing with your mouth. Uh, there's also a way to do it where you can kind of block the air with your tongue. I don't particularly like it. I think it's a little bit hard to control for me personally, but. Yeah. 
based on where my tongue is in my mouth and like where it is in my embouchure, I can do it a little bit. I just don't like that particular sound, so I don't use it personally, but if it works better for you, um, something to explore, I unfortunately can't really break it down for you, but yeah. So this one's a pretty straightforward one. It's just like loosen your embouchure and see what comes out and then go from there. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. If you guys liked this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to support me more, check out my Patreon, and I'll see you guys next week.